Hey pianist, this is Garrett Broughton. Welcome to another session. Today, let's start and talk by the piano. So I'm just getting started and hopefully you'll find this helpful even if you are a beginner or an intermediate or advanced, there's always something to pick up. And then over time, we'll, uh, we'll get on to even, even more interesting sessions. So let's get started with piano basics. So I have a a presentation here that we can go through and then we can along the way we can practice our piano so let's first thing what we'll cover we'll cover some brain exercises these are things that you can do when you don't have access to a piano some ideas to to help you in between the proper finger posture what you will actually do to make sure that you're playing correctly and not uh, getting fatigue then uh, we'll talk a little bit about piano sizes and the different options you can use when buying a piano. Then some basics such as the keys and the note locations. Then intervals. We'll talk about the tones and semitones. Then we'll talk about chords and maybe a few songs that you can practice or things you can try on your own. So first thing is you have to get your mind mentality set. Uh, a lot of us out there, we love music. We love to listen to music, but we just don't think that we can play it. But it's simply untrue. You just have to get your mindset to where you enjoy it so much that you cannot fail. And even if you are an adult, anyone can pick it up. There's people that say, I can't play an instrument. Well, you can start by the basics, such as piano. And some might even say, I can't play with my left hand, but that's, that's even uh, possible. You just have to, you have to try and work at it. You'll have to take some patience and maybe get some help from others, but eventually you'll get it just like anything, uh, takes a little time. And so that, uh, things you can do to exercise is just, uh, imagine in your mind, when you're not playing of what it would be like and then when you actually go to play it'll be much easier to translate and you could do this by downloading some podcasts or videos offline through youtube and just listen to your favorite uh, trainer or coach and they can walk you through different practice drills for example a uh, gentleman had a slide where notes would fall down the page and then you just had to memorize what notes he was pressing on the keyboard so you can do this in between and it'll really help you out so let's talk about finger tech terminology so first thing some might talk about the numbers so your thumb would be number one your index number two middle finger three four and five and so on and then same thing with your left hand one two three four and five and that's a good way to start before you jump right into actual to the keys or notes themselves then you can start by after you get the numbers down then you can go to your to your keys so for example you could say one two three four five and some might actually label the keys that or to give them their alphabetic names I don't really recommend doing that because it'll just slow down your learning it's best just to memorize them as quickly as possible and that way you can read your music much easier and get uh, get the basics down much more quickly another uh, thing that you should learn is how to have the proper posture so if you think about your wrist when it's relaxed if you're sleeping your hands are like this they're not straight they're not up so when you're playing the piano you want them to be relaxed like this so if you turn it over now you have relaxed fingers and you'll get less fatigue also you want to make sure your wrist is straight just like this not like this or up like this that way when you play a note you won't get fatigued and when you do play the note, you don't want to slam it or you don't want to lightly touch it. You just want to firmly press it down and up. There's also a maneuver called the tuck. 
And that is if you are playing an entire scale, for example, eight keys, you'll play the first two and then you'll tuck your left thumb over and then you'll play the rest. And then move back over and move your thumb. So when you're moving up and down the keyboard, you just tuck your thumb and move it. And now everyone's hand sizes are different, but again, just practice. Try to start with the best practice, and then that way you'll get the hang of it. We'll talk a little bit about chords in a moment. So let's talk about pianos. When you're out there getting your own piano, uh, for me, just basic, I started with the basic ones you can find in a retailer for under $50 to $100, Amazon or, or Target or in your local store. And even uh, uh, Jag from our group gave a suggestion of Goodwill, so that's a great place to, to pick up some, some good instruments. And then if you become more advanced, you'll uh, look at the different options. So here we have a 32, a 36, 37. 49, 54, 61, 76, and 88. And the reason for that is 88 being a grand piano, you're going to have a higher range. And music notes are just a hertz, and that's uh, the size of wavelength, so it could be from low to high range. And the more, the more complicated or uh, music that you're trying to get, you're going to want more notes. So like a grand piano when you're playing a musical performance in a musical hall, you'll want something like that. And then you're also, it's going to carry longer distance. So there's a lot bigger space to fill. But if you're in just your own single room, you don't need as large a piano, maybe for portability. And so that's what I did. I just have a small 54 key board here to get me started. And what you can do to easily count this is the number of keys in an octave. So if you look at the pattern of keys, you're, you're going to have five sharps and flats, and then they repeat. So you'll have a group of two and a group of three. And then you have eight keys from C to C in an octave. Okay, so that's a total of 13 keys in one octave. And then you count the number of octaves. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and there's five. So there's five octaves on this keyboard of 54 keys. So that's a good way to get a sense of the size of keyboard you have. All right, let's talk about the alphabet. And this, this diagram I got from the Piano Keyboard Guide on YouTube, which I referenced in the last slides. He's a really good instructor. He has a ton of content out there, over a thousand videos you can go check out. And he's really good at giving the basics. So what he's saying here is music is represented A through G. And what you actually do is you want to start with C. Is There's really no um, clear definition why the piano does, but that's the, the standard. So you want to pick out the middle C, which is in the middle of your keyboard, and that's where you want to set your belly button in the middle C. And that's where your le left and right hand go. So your thumb plays in the middle C on your right hand, and then on your left hand plays the middle C. And this over here is called your bass clef, and then on the right is treble clef. So if you're reading sheet music, on the top you're going to have your treble, and then on the bottom you're going to have bass. And if you flip the music up like this, on the right hand your treble, on the left hand bass is one way to think about it. So here is a representation of sharps and flats. One thing you should do is just practice a scale. And once you have the natural notes memorized, then you can move to the sharps and flats. And a sharp and flat is nothing but a, tone, a semitone. We'll get to that in a second. From the natural notes. So C, and then you go up is C sharp. So sharps go up and flats go down. So for example, C sharp, and then we'll go D sharp. Then there is no sharp for E, 
and then you go another semitone, and then you have F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then you're back to C, no sharp. And then if you're going back down to flats, so you have C, but there's no flat, and then you'll have D with the flat, and then E flat, and then F does not have a flat, G flat, A flat, B flat. Okay, so it sharps going up, flats going down. It could be either as you see in the chart. So just practice uh, memorizing those. It'll be like your friends and family where you won't actually even need to think about it after a while. Okay, so intervals and, sc and scales. An interval is important to, to remember, and that is basically a semitone or a tone. So a semitone would be up a half step or down a half step. A whole tone is up a full step. So that is if you actually go two, two notes. So here's a semitone, and then two steps is a whole tone. So that's a whole tone. And you same thing for going down. So a semitone, not a not a sharp or flat in the middle, so that's a semitone. Then you have here what's called your natural notes or a scale. And we're gonna play the C scale. And one thing you can do is just practice playing that. And then practice playing it with your left hand and your right hand. That's a good way to get your logistics with your with your hands. Another thing to mention that I talked about earlier is there's 13 notes. So you have your natural notes, sharps and flats, and an octave that's from C to C. So that's your, your intervals and your scales. If you need to repeat this video to get the hang of it, go, go, go for it. Hopefully uh, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so next, one thing I've learned is you actually should uh, play your chords, really. Learn those before even playing songs and notes because you can play many songs with just chords. And the, the chords that you learn are C major. These are the basics. F major, G major, and A minor. So, for example, uh, what, what is a chord? A chord is three or more notes played together to make a harmony. And it also could be called a triad, and they are played at the same time. So, for example, a C major chord is going to be a C, an E, and a G. So there's your C chord. And then you do what's called an inversion. Think of it like a Lego or a Jenga where you take out the bottom and move to the top. So you're just going to move over. And this is going to be called, starting with the F. So your F major chord. And then G. And then A minor. And the first one is called your root of the chord. And another thing you can do, which is hard for me to do while I'm recording this, but you can play the root of in the bass clef. So when you're playing a C, to practice with your left hand, you're playing a C chord. You can also, with your left hand, play the C. Same thing here with an F major. You play your F. So that's called your root. Uh, so yeah, give that uh, some practice. Just play those over and over and over and then move on to some more chords. Okay, so practice songs you can do. Uh, Happy Birthday, Hot Cross Buns, Twinkle Twinkle. Pretty basic stuff, but things that you might enjoy. And you'll find it really easy. You really only have to, it's like riding a bicycle. It really is. Some may say that they forgot how to do it, but once once you practice it for a few times, then it commits your, to your long-term memory. And you may be rusty to pick it back up, but after a while, you'll uh, be able to, to do it. So uh, 
I'll just do one here. If you want to follow along, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Really only took probably a couple days, 15 minutes. It really doesn't take much time. And then you start getting rewarded by feeling like you're making progress. And then you put that in your memory bank and you move on. And you can, you can play many songs along the way. So here's a, a good reference, the Piano Keyboard Guide on YouTube. He has a great uh, fundamentals that you can go check out. And hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully you give it a give it a try. Send some comments. Let me know some more ideas if you, uh, if you like. And until next time, see you later.